What do Ronaldo, Socrates and Tevez all have in common? They have all played for the team Corinthians Paulista in Sao Paulo, which is one of the most successful Brazilian football clubs. Yeah, it was in 1910 when five Brazilian railway workers decided to set up their own team after seeing the London-based club Corinthians, uh, the Corinthian Casuals, touring Brazil over 100 years later. The legacy lives on, as does the bond between the South London and the Brazilian club. They face uh, the, this team with my team in Brazil. It's wonderful. I think a little piece of uh, my team in Brazil, here in, in London. Every time we come here and see everyone and that connection that it has to the Brazilian team, um, everyone cheering, you know, they're cheering English, they cheer in Portuguese. I think that's something that you don't see with any other team around here. Jamie is like a superstar there now. He's famous. <laughs> So this is from a film called Brothers in Football and it's going to be going out tonight on ITV just after 11 o'clock. The film's director, who is also a Corinthians player, Chris Watney, joins us alongside teammate Jamie Byatt, who has played in Sao Paulo. Very good morning to you, both. Very famous, very big in Sao Paulo as well, by the way. <laughs> when they say I am. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us the story of this extraordinary connection between a small non-league club yeah. from South London yeah. uh, and one of the biggest football clubs in the world yeah. that was inspired by them. Absolutely. This, this little forgotten national treasure, really, in Tolworth, down by Kingston. They were called the Corinthians originally and they took football all around the world. They're the club credited with popularising football all around the world. And in 1910, they went to Brazil, where they inspired five railway workers to set up their own club. And they were so inspired by how great the Corinthians were, who were like the first icons of football, uh, they decided to call the club Corinthians in their honour. And today they are the biggest club in Brazil. That's extraordinary. And that was back in 1910. Something then happened to the original club yeah. at the start of, the out of World War I, which yeah. was devastating for the South London in, team. In 1914, they were on a ship to Brazil again for another tour when they discovered via tele telegram that the war had started. So they immediately returned home, uh, thinking you know, the Corinthian spirit was all about there's more to life than just football. And the club lost a record number of men in the war. They lost 106 men. And that, that tour never happened. So in 2015, we decided to try and fulfil those fixtures that had never happened. And we went back there and we played against the world champions. So, Jamie, you, I mean, obviously you played, uh, your, I think, your coaching staff now for yep, the Corinthians, aren't yep. you? But you, you're playing at the time. So when Chris is saying, right, boys, we're going to go and we're going to fulfil those fixtures, we're going to go to Brazil. I mean, it's one thing to have the Corinthian fans come, and they come to Tolworth, don't they? they just to yeah, see the Corinthians they, play. They, they do. But to turn up there, what was it like when you turned up in Sao Paulo? Uh, well, it's, it's unreal, you know. Obviously, you arrive at the airport and there's, like, 2,000 people ready to greet you there. And, obviously, it's just, it, was, it was fantastic. It's dream come true. And, you're, and you are, your job is a scaffolder? Yep. You're scaffolder. a scaffolder by trade, and here you are turning up like an international superstar. Yeah. Uh, because you, we saw that shot of you showing the Corinthian shirt under your, your, your shirt when oh, you scored. Shirt, yeah. what, was, what was it like going around and, and, and suddenly being recognised for your footballing, not your scaffolding skills? Uh, it, was, it was quite crazy, really. Um, you know, obviously, you see the T-shirt, I unreeled it, and it obviously went a bit crazy, and then obviously... They say I've come a bit of a star in Brazil, so, yeah. It, was, it, became, it, was... it became genuinely front-page news in Brazil. We turned up in Sao Paulo, and everyone's cheering Jamie's name. And he became a, a real cult hero. They've got 30 million fans in Sao Paulo. And, um, and yeah, that, that shot of him lifting, the, it just went Which crazy. Which is this shot here. He just scores that great goal. That yeah. shot there. So he does that there. And we put that on Facebook. And overnight, it got thousands and thousands and thousands of likes. Chris, uh, with no disrespect <laughs> to the squad, yeah. how come Corinthian casuals haven't done quite as well as the Brazilian team <laughs> well, that, that, that yes, they inspired? It's very true. And do the Brazilians sort of think, ooh, you know, why, why haven't you won some major yeah, trophies it's true. in your time? The, the thing with Corinthian casuals is that we are the highest-ranked strictly amateur team in the country. So the Corinthians were, were these amateur icons and we've stuck to their principles and their ethos of Corinthian spirit and playing the game for the love of it and and so we've remained like that so as the professional game has picked up and it's obviously taken over we've dropped down a bit but our goal at Corinthian casuals isn't necessarily to win the titles it's to keep alive the beauty in the game and uh, we should declare an interest here shouldn't we because 
Ben, yeah. you lend your silky skills. No, I'm not sure you? they're silky, as Ben will attest. Hey, Chris, Chris dragged me in a few years ago, and I've been playing for the, the vet side now. It's sort yeah. of a bit of a touring side, really, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so, sort of like the Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> oh, Ooh, <laughs> <good>. <laughs> but what's lovely is, and I, uh, that's me playing my that's old great. school, Chigwell School, which is where I went to school. And when I was at school in the sixth form, we played the Corinthian Casuals, and we always used to look forward to it as a big game because... Right. A lot of the players have played, like Jamie plays, has played at a really high level for us, sort of non-league football, but high level. And it was always a really exciting game. And now, as a 44-year-old man and way past my best, to be able to go around those schools and play is really, really exciting. It's, it's a wonderful aspect of the club. We've got a side who, who tour all the schools. And the idea is that we go and educate the next generation of the game the Corinthian spirit and the Corinthian values of playing for fair play. And Ben, as our defensive midfield general, <laughs> uh, very much uh, helps I, us do that. I, yes, I do, you see. I'm very well behaved when I play for the Corinthian casuals. If only you could be well behaved all the time. <laughs> um, you've, you've inspired lots of teams, haven't you? Apparently, you're the reason that Real Madrid wear white. Yeah. What's that about? Yeah, we, we, we inspired Real Madrid to wear white. Their, their founding fathers, there was an Englishman amongst them, who, who had seen Corinthians play and, again, was inspired by how great they were. And so he put Real Madrid in a white shirt originally. Um, it's the richest history, pretty much, in all of football. We, we, the only club to ever entirely represent the England team, the entire England team, were Corinthians. Um, we've got the record victory over Manchester United and the first prominent black player played for Corinthians. What um, year was that, Chris? Do you remember? That was 18, uh, 1883, Andrew Watson. Wow. Yeah, he was he was captain of Scotland actually just before joining us and then he came to play for us. You sound like our greatest footballing secret. <laughs> 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 it, it really so. is. It's a, it's a forgotten yeah. national And Jamie, you got to play for Corinthians in that match. There's 30,000 people turn up. It was shown on TV, wasn't it, when Corinthians played yeah. at the Corinthian Casuals. And you actually got to play for the opposition for a short period. Yeah, of yeah, obviously I got to play for them in the last about the last 5 minutes of the game. Uh, yeah, Who did a, you play alongside? Uh, hard, uh uh, Luciano. Lu yeah, Luciano. Who's in the Brazil yeah. squad? Now? Yeah, yes, he's in yeah. the Brazil. And he, he stole a goal off Jamie. Yeah. I don't want to ruin, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin the end of the film. Oh. But the ball was coming to Jamie, playing for Corinthians Paulista, and Luciano nicked in. But uh, yeah. Is that why he plays internationally and Jamie's <laughs> yeah, playing for yeah. 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 it? If you're in front of you the goal, you've just got you to take your chances. Exactly. You, you know that. I've seen you, Jamie. Oh, I've seen brilliant. you do that. What an extraordinary story. Thank you both so much Thank you. Uh, for coming in. You can see the full Brothers in Football documentary tonight, ITV at 11.05pm. It's a bit like the footballing equivalent of Forrest Gump. Like, they just appear at every yeah. significant <laughs> moment. Well, they were. No, no, you're absolutely right. They pop yeah. up all the way through it. And it, the litany, the, 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 if you talk, I mean, Chris can talk about this for hours, trust yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. but so it's, beautifully. It's, it's beautifully. an extraordinary history, which I now mar by playing for them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. 16 minutes past seven. Right, competition time, your chance to win 100.